Natural areas are such a special part of our community. Here in Fort Collins, we have 44 natural areas and over 100 miles of trail. From Shortgrass Prairie at Soapstone Prairie Natural Area, all the way down to small neighborhood natural areas. As a citizen, you'll notice that many of our local natural areas are getting bigger. Uh, we're conserving those little extra pieces of property, those last pieces of the puzzle. We've acquired these additional lands along Napooter to create and uh, restore additional habitat, both riparian habitat as well as wetlands, and make it a better user experience for you and your family. One of the unique things about the city's natural areas department is that we are restoring ecosystems. We have a lot of lands that have been uh, historically used for um, either grazing or industrial purposes and so we work really hard to move those lands back into a, a productive situation for, for wildlife. Restoration areas really need to have a lot of diversity, a lot of different types of species in order to be successful and to be sustainable. Areas like soapstone or bobcat, these regional natural areas really provide an excellent seed source for us to go and collect these uh, seed species with volunteers and be able to put those out on our restorations. We're really working hard to convert these lands from areas with merely one or two species to areas that are diverse and have 10 to 15 grass species and another 20 wildflower type species that provide a great diversity of habitat for wildlife. The Rigdon Reservoir was a unique partnership with utilities and parks where we acquired a gravel pit from a private citizen and we developed a water storage reservoir into a great addition to Arapahoe Bend Natural Area. It also allowed parks to build a, over a mile portion of the Poudre River Trail around the north side of the reservoir and, and ultimately will restore it into some beautiful native grasslands and habitat for wildlife. We are partnering with uh, Neighbor to Neighbor and the Housing Authority to take over the management of a little over a three acre pond that's adjacent to both of their affordable housing developments. And we're going to restore that to provide not only a neighborhood natural area, but a natural area that will serve the uh, residents of both of those affordable housing complexes. We are also working with Larimer County to conserve lands adjacent to some of our existing foothills open spaces and natural areas. What this means to you is that we'll have conserved more of the scenic backdrop to Fort Collins and also hope to add uh, much more recreation opportunities in the future. One of the things I love about Fort Collins is how the community is engaged with natural areas. Each year, our staff and volunteer provide almost 200 programs for all ages. It's wonderful to watch kids doing hands-on, minds-on science in our natural areas, to watch that spark of inquiry be launched in a child. Volunteers can get involved with projects such as weeding, planting. We also do trail building projects where volunteers can build new trails or help maintain existing trails. We also have over 150 volunteer ranger assistants out on the trail providing awesome customer service to hikers, bikers, and recreators of all kinds. Our partnership with the City of Loveland to conserve lands in the Fort Collins Community Separator will not only provide a buffer between our communities, but it'll also conserve our agricultural heritage as well. We recently partnered with our stormwater utility to conserve about 30 acres of open space along the Poudre River Trail and allow them to create a drainage swale to uh, prevent future flooding in the area. I'm real proud of our natural area staff for being so innovative and so willing to think out of the box. Some of the ways that we really try to incorporate sustainability and new innovations for our department. Last year we built our new main office building, which is a little over 4,000 square feet. It's built to lead gold standards and it incorporates um, a PV system, solar tubes, that helps cut down on lighting costs, and a geothermal heating and cooling system. At this point in time, out of all city facilities, it's the most efficient. We added on to our PV system for the main shop. As well, we incorporated 18 solar tubes. So now we have a city facility that generates more power than it actually utilizes. Around all of our buildings here at the Nix campus, we have a, a native plant slash exhibition garden. Um, all of our plants are labeled low water use, and that way it allows the public to come in and they can take a look at the different plants that they can use in their xeriscape at their own house. We're also bringing back state-threatened and endangered fish at Top Minnow Natural Area, which is on East Horse Tooth Road. 
and it was named after the Plains top minnow, a fish that will be using that site as a nursery. A year ago, endangered black-footed ferrets were reintroduced to Soapstone Prairie Natural Area. This was the first municipal reintroduction of this endangered species. This year, we checked up on the black-footed ferret population and we found a mother who was nursing a wild-born kit, which means that the population is doing well, they're reproducing in the wild. Last year, we reintroduced the endangered species of the black-footed ferrets and this year the bison are taking their place as a key part of the ecosystem. They ranged almost from coast to coast and their numbers were tens of millions, maybe 60 million animals. Bison were part of the short grass prairie until the 1880s when their population was almost eliminated. The hide hunt that reduced them from tens of millions to probably 600 animals in the early 1890s. Together, our partners helped us solve three of the key challenges to bison preservation, habitat, disease, and genetics. Most bison herds have been interbred with cattle. One of the only herds with pure genetics is at Yellowstone National Park. The problem with the Yellowstone bison herd is that those bison carry a devastating disease called brucellosis. We've solved all of these challenges by working with our partners at Colorado State University who has brought assisted reproductive technology. These animals, this, this pure herd, might be the first in 150 years that has stepped back on this land. What comes before you today is what the crow call Bojé. Bojé in our language is the buffalo. This is what a crow would say, and that wall bear, it chick, meaning it's a good day. It's a good day. Bison are coming back to the short grass prairie in northern Colorado, and we're very excited. Over and over again, voters have supported natural areas by voting for sales taxes that go for acquiring lands and taking care of them. Thank you, voters, for your support of natural areas.